Hi, good morning. Can you hear me okay, David? Yes, I can. Let's see. Who is that? Casey. What's yes. up? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I am new to the Salesforce backends part of Salesforce, and I've decided to use it as one of my verticals for my freelance consult business. Good for you. Congratulations and welcome Thank to you. the world, the crazy world that we're all living in, which is great. Right. When I went to a meeting in Atlanta, I'm based out of Atlanta, one of the architects said that companies now are going to a multi-cloud solution. So how I interpret that is focus and really fine-tune the specific certifications I plan on getting over the next few years, and then pick another cloud just to have versatility as a solopreneur. And I just want your feedback on this idea that Salesforce is, but there needs to be versatility around what you offer if you're working for yourself. I'm not sure if that's out of scope for this conversation. No, this, uh, that is an amazing question. Thank you for calling it out. So what I'm going to say is that I think the skills that are needed to be successful in the Salesforce world, whether you're thinking of the terminology of Salesforce admin or consultant or freelance consultant or even developer, or project manager, or BA. In order to be successful in the Salesforce world, of course, there's some level of familiarity or expertise that you need to have on the Salesforce platform. That's for sure. The level of expertise or the number of certifications depends on so many different things. It depends on your area of interest, the type of that you have, the type of company that you're in, the types of products that your comp the company where you're employed at is using. And I realize you said you talked about being a freelance consultant. So in your context, Casey specifically, you're not talking about uh, your place of employment, but the, the company that I'm working with, what platforms are they using? It's going to be unlimited. Every day you're going to have a new surprise of what platform they're using for anything. But so all of that is really very dependent and it can mean a lot of different things. No matter what, any company that's using Salesforce, I guarantee that they are using some other cloud-based tool somewhere else within operations of the business that also overlaps with the use of Salesforce. For example, most companies are using Microsoft Office, Outlook, Gmail. Most companies are also using something like a Google Drive or Dropbox or SharePoint or Box.com. Those are cloud-based tools that they're if you look, sometimes you don't really have to look very hard. There's some overlap in terms of how Salesforce is being used organically within the company. And let's make believe for a minute we're talking about sales, marketing, customer support type of roles. And let's, to keep with the example of file storage, the document storage solutions that are available and which ones the company is actually using. So even if you take that example that I just gave, you could be an expert in or simply familiar with the Salesforce platform in general. And by simply becoming familiar, maybe even with the first project that you happen to be working on, where they say, you know what, we have SharePoint. What are the different options to integrate SharePoint and Salesforce? And depending on what they even mean by the word integration, because usually they are not talking about every file in SharePoint should go into Salesforce or the other way around. They're not talking about that usually. Depending on what they need, you are now becoming an expert in at least one use case of connecting these two systems at least from a, an operations perspective. So the way I see it, the skills that are necessary go far above and beyond. Yes, you can focus exclusively on what other Salesforce certifications should I learn? What other Salesforce platforms should I become familiar with? And because of the way that Salesforce keeps introducing new products, new features, new certifications, you're, go, that's going to, you're gonna be in a continuous loop of feeling that you can never catch up. And I'm not so sure that is necessarily the best way to manage your own career. Instead, I would suggest the best way to manage your own career is really in terms of focusing on the needs of the organizations that you're working with. What other platforms are they using? What other use cases are important to them? And taking a baby step, one step at a time to become more familiar and become an expert in that. Along with that, what I'll also say is the overarching umbrella of soft skills project management, problem solving, leadership, communication skills. I can keep going on and on. There's so much more. Those are of utmost importance, regardless of whatever role you have. And it could be Salesforce platform or not. So I would focus on those things, not on collecting trailhead badges and Salesforce certifications.
Does that answer your question, Casey? And that was like a whole TED talk. No, it was perfect because, yeah, I found the reason why I do well is those soft skills to be able to navigate and go and have people trust me to go into Salesforce because I'm an admin now. Right. So yeah. in the certification, because they move so quickly, I really just decided to focus on a few and just really become really strong at that and just kind that's of it. my people's skills and that's kind of it. But you I got two with- thumbs up from me. I, yes, that's what you should do. Okay. 100%. Awesome. Thank you. I writing. So I'm going to try that plan out, see how it goes. Awesome. And feel, feel free to uh, reach out uh, at any point uh, if you want to chat further about it. Awesome. Thank you. My pleasure. Nadia, I see you have your hand up. It's good to see you here, Nadia. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, David. Hi, everybody. I just wanted to add, actually, that the technical side is super important. Yes, 100%. But also, it's the business acumen that will distinguish you, make you stand out. And if you have experience, for example, with a particular industry or a particular type of company, I would definitely capitalize on that. I'm currently consulting with for two SaaS companies, and I specialize in, like I said, SaaS companies, but startups and scale-ups as a consultant, right? And the reason for this is because most of my sales for per year, I have spent working for and clients that are in the tech space. So I was able to transition and start consulting first on the side, because if you have an experience of like manufacturing, for example, that comes with some specific processes that are applicable to them and not maybe a SaaS company, right? That's going to be different. So if you already have this experience, I would try, like I said, to capitalize on that. And then in parallel, learning, obviously, the technical side of things. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Thank you. So should we kick it off? Yes, go for it. Okay. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. I'm Gabby Caballero. I'm the lead Salesforce enablement program manager over at a company called UKG. It's Ultimate Software and Kronos Group merged about two years ago and they rebranded as UKG. So I'm the lead group leader for the community group leader for Pompano Beach, Florida. Thank you so much. I just wanted to introduce myself and thank you all for joining us during your lunch break and thank David for being our presenter. So David, I'll pass it over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I am, why am I stumped over here with finding the chat window for Zoom? I had it open in front of me a moment ago. Yes, everyone. Oh, here it is. Okay. I'm going to put a link in there. And so take a look in the chat window for Zoom. I put a link. I'm about to share my screen in a second. I put a link in there for a freebie of chat GPT prompts for Salesforce admins. Before I forget, I want to make sure that you have that. So with that being said, thank you all for joining today. I am really excited to focus on how Salesforce professionals, more specifically Salesforce admins, can get the most out of ChatGPT. And we can broaden it a little bit to say AI in general to be far more productive, to boost your careers, to eliminate obstacles that you experience on a day-to-day basis at work. Uh, So yes, I will be focusing on ChatGPT, but everything that I'm saying is really not exclusive to ChatGPT. And I'll dabble a little bit further into what I even mean by that. But just to keep things simple, let's focus on ChatGPT. Before I do, for those of you who don't know me, my name is David Giller. I am a Salesforce consultant and trainer. I am based in the New York City area and I am CEO of Brainiate, where we help companies and individuals to get the most out of Salesforce and trying to always do it with a sense of humor and practicality and sometimes some sarcasm. If you follow me on social media, if you don't, that's okay. I'm not insulted whatsoever. But a lot of times I I exude that sarcasm on social media, including LinkedIn, where people say I'm really stretching the limits of what's appropriate on LinkedIn. But anyway. So with that being said, you should all be able to see my screen where I'm showing ChatGPT, right? At at least not. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. So don't be distracted. If what's on the screen looks different than when you're in ChatGPT, don't be distracted by that. I'm about to describe uh, like what's going on. There's a lot of what might look to you like clutter on my screen, like in the main portion of the screen, there's like a whole lot of junk going on over there. And I I was thinking whether or not I should 
remove it. It's a plugin that I have for ChatGPT. It's a, a browser plugin. And it's a plugin that I pay for. I think it's absolutely fantastic. By the way, I'm not trying to get you to buy anything, <laughs> but it's absolutely fantastic. It's called AI PRM, as you can see over here, uh, where I have the uh, premium account. They have multiple levels. And essentially what that means is, I'm just going to describe it. I'm not going to dive deep into it because this session is not about AI PRM. What it is, think of it as a community, a public, publicly accessible, or at least to AI PRM members, publicly accessible or shared prompts for chat GPT. So if let's say I need some help in, let's say, writing a blog article, I can go here and I can just type in the word blog and it's searching through all of the public prompts of which 366 of them include the word blog somewhere in the prompt. And then if I want to use any of these, and by the way, there's some garbage in here, but there's some really good ones. So all I have to do is click on it and then it automatically put this in the chat GPT input screen. And then I could just type in whatever I want and it'll automatically do it. So it's really just templates that are baked in. So what you can see the tabs that I have over here on the top, the first tab is those that are official templates that are official from AI PRM, valid or validated or verified from them. And the rest are just public and then you can create your own. So I'm not going to show you those that I created my own because I consider those some of my secret sauce. We're not going to, everything that I'm going to show you now has nothing to do with these predefined prompt. I basically use these to learn new skills on how to do really some really cool things in ChatGPT. So that's the first thing that I want to call out. The other thing that I want to call out, most of you might be thinking, wait, for everything that you're going to show, do you need to have the paid version or the free version of ChatGPT? You can use for almost everything that I'm going to show you, you could use the free version, which is GPT 3.5 as of today. You could use that. The only difference is, and the reason why I pay for the paid version, which is like $20 a month, the reason why I pay for it is because I am a ChatGPT addict. If you know of any good therapists, I'm all ears. I'm a ChatGPT addict, and there have been times when I have been thrown off of the free version, and I'm like, I more. So I pay $20 a month. By the way, even with the $20 a month, there have been times where I've gotten thrown off for using it too much, and it says you can't come back until whenever, whatever. And there's a lot of other really cool features that you can use with the Plus version. For example, right now with the GPT 3.5, you can see over here, let's get rid of that prompt. And you can see over here, like this looks like what the screen looks like for most of you when you're in ChatGPT. However, when I go over here to ChatGPT4, you see now that there's a little paperclip icon. That means that I can attach a file that I have on my computer. So if let's say I have, for example, a transcript of a meeting, or I have a list of notes, or I have a template of best practices on what to do for whatever, anything, I can attach it over here and I can tell ChatGPT, read the document, and then help me with the following questions. So that is incredibly powerful. That's the first thing that you can do. The second thing you can do, as you can see over here, you have DALI automatically built into it, which means if I go here and I can simply type in saying, and create an image for me for social media that, that looks like X, Y, and Z, it can do it. I don't really use it for that, but it, it can do that. Some of the other things that you can do is there's this plugin store that was recently released. And in the plugin store, you can add all sorts of different really cool plugins. You can see some of them that I have here, for example, diagrams. Hopefully we'll have time and I'll get to show you this later where you can have the system create a process map for you, a visual process map or any other kind of diagram, like some really cool stuff. Yeah, web requests, so you can put in a URL and have it look at the web for certain things. But if I go to the plugin store, there's tons and tons of plugins here that they're always getting, they're always new ones that are getting updated and it could be a little overwhelming. So there's the plugins. And the other thing that is super, super cool is that you can watch this. You can also get to what they call uh, public GPTs. So this is similar to AI PRM, where people can create their own public GPT. So you see here, it says search public GPTs. So if I want to find a GPT that has to do with, let's say, Salesforce, I would do something like this. And anyone who created one with the word Salesforce, uh, it'll be here and you can do whatever you want with it. Now, by the way, this is also showing ones that I created. And I created quite a few that are private that I'm not sharing with others, but because I typed it in here, it's showing some of those that I created, like Salesforce admin humor, 
And so what is this exactly? Exactly. This is basically a template where I'll show you, I'll hit edit GPT. And I uploaded documents on how to create stand-up comedy. And then I say, act as an experienced writer for stand-up comedy. Attached, you'll find two PDFs, which provide examples and explanations for writing comedy. Use this as your knowledge for creating any outputs with this GPT. Step one, the users are going to provide you with a topic for creating humorous content. Step two, seek confirmation from the user regarding the target audience. Step three, carefully review the provided knowledge articles and generate three distinct stand-up routines. So watch this. So if I use this, I can, or I can go to this other screen to do it from here. I could do something like a new user, watch this, a new user insisted on getting permissions to import new contacts and accounts into Salesforce. Within 24 hours, she imported the same 20,000 records six times, and now she wants to know why the system sucks. So that's all I'm putting in. And then when I hit enter, watch what happens. It's reading the PDFs that I uploaded. And you're about to see why I'm so addicted to this thing. And it says, let's dive into the humorous world of Salesforce admin mishaps with our protagonist, the eager yet overly enthusiastic new user who's managed to turn the CRM into her personal playground of duplication. Here are three comedic takes on this all too familiar scenario. So it's writing three different stand-up routines. Some of them are really not funny, but some are really hysterical. Imagine our new user, let's call her Sandy, in her first week, armed with the import button. It's like a shiny new toy. Sandy thought if importing records is good, doing it six times must be six times better, right? Picture her enthusiasm as if she's discovered a new feature called Deja Vu Data, the punchline. When asked why the CRM sucks, Sandy's like, it doesn't suck. It's just really into repetition. This routine plays on the absurdity of literal thinking and overenthusiasm in the face of a simple task. Anyway, so you get the idea where you can use it for anything. And by the way, I have many GPTs that I have created for functional use as a Salesforce admin or Salesforce consultant. I'm not going to show you those because those are not relevant for this material, I'm not for this session. What this session is focused on is me teaching you best practices on, let's go back to the generic best practices on how you can use uh, ChatGPT as a Salesforce professional when you are working your day-to-day -day job. So let's take a couple of common scenarios. One common scenario is, and by the way, if any of you have ideas for a different scenario that you want me to play out, either feel free to unmute yourselves and say it, or you can feel free to, you can feel free to, sorry, I don't know what the heck, sorry. Or you can feel free to put it in the chat. So let, the first scenario is, I think, a very common one where you are working as a Salesforce admin. You're working with someone who is a senior person within the organization where you don't really feel that you have the authority to speak up and say how absolutely insane their request is. And sometimes it's not a request. Sometimes they are insisting on something that is absolutely nonsensical. It does not follow best practices. And you are struggling to figure out, how do I handle the situation? How do I push back? I don't want to be forced into creating something that's nonsensical. And I'll just, picking out of thin air, I mean, it really could be anything at all, but I'll just pick out of thin air. Let's say someone comes to you and says, I want you to create another a custom object to track my contacts. I don't want it to be shared with everyone else. I want it to be my own tab. And that's what I want. And you're like, no. But the person who's asking you this is the CEO or the CEO's son, who's the head of sales or something like that. And you just feel that you are not empowered to do anything. And you're just in a position where don't force me because then you are going to be thrown under the bus if you end up doing it and knowing that it's someone's going to say, oh, how do we pull a mailing list? We want to integrate with uh, Constant Contact or MailChimp or Pardot or anything else. And how do we pull a list of all of our contacts? And you can't possibly do it. Anyhow, so we're going to use ChatGPT for that. So we're going to, I'm going to go here into the free version. I'm going to, where you're ignoring everything that's in the main center of the screen, making believe that you're on the completely free version of ChatGPT. And I'm going to go in here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is you need to assign a role to the GPT. You need to prep it to have it have an understanding of the context 
from which you're asking the question and the type of output that you're looking for, you need to assign it a role. And the best way to do that, the simplest way to do that, there are many ways you could do it, but you could just say, act as a, and then fill in the blank. So what I'm going to do is act as an experienced Salesforce admin. And that's it. You don't need to be more elaborate than that. And now I'm going to say, and this part, I don't know if it's critical, but I do it anyway. I don't know if I'm getting a better output because I'm doing this, but I say, I need your help. I'm losing my mind here because the CEO is insisting that I create a new custom object in Salesforce just to track his contacts. I know this is a terrible idea, but I'm really not sure how to communicate or push back on him to avoid creating a total disaster. I definitely don't want to get thrown under the bus and need to stop this chaos before it happens. Or at the very least, at least do some, I'm just going to say CYA, so that my concerns about the risks are clearly communicated without me losing my job. Now, what you're going to see over here, what I just did is essentially what feels like just a freeform brain dump, like treating ChatGPT as if it's my therapist. And I'm venting, I'm expressing my concerns, I'm giving it some context. Now, by doing that, what you're going to see is the type of the the type of feedback that you're going to get, the type of outputs that you're going to get from ChatGPT are going to be far more in tune with what you need the more you do this. So by giving it the context, by explaining maybe nuances about the person, this person is so not technical, this person doesn't have the patience, they don't read my emails, they just scan them. So whatever it is, anything like that, feel free to put it in. While at the same time trying to hold back, you need to draw a line in the sand on not putting too much confidential, sensitive, private information in there. So I'm not specifying like the name of my company, the name of who the CEO is. I'm not specifying like any of that type of stuff where I'm giving enough information or I'm hoping that I'm giving it enough information so that it can give me the appropriate uh, response for what I need without giving too much information that is really not even necessary and might put me in jeopardy for putting into this system some private information that really shouldn't be shared. I'm going to pause. Anyone have any questions on anything that I did so far? Good so far? Yes. Hi. It's Felice. I haven't talked to you in a very long time. Yes, so good to see you. Your face. So my question mm -hmm. is, how oh, similar is this to, let's say, Wikipedia, where JPT, I believe, is getting information from sources, but I don't know how much it verifies what's true, right? Wait, say that again. I'm sorry. Repeat that. Please. Okay. So what, what I'm wondering is, for example, so I'm doing this, right? And I'm thinking the answer is like the God's honest truth, right? Ah, so you want to make sure that the response you're getting is accurate. Because some of this is a little subjective, right? Oh, you mean the response that I'm getting or the input that I'm putting in? The response that you'll get, right? Because right. it's like an emotional thing, right? About So I'm putting in emotional, yes, I'm putting in a, in a, a lot of emotional context, okay. but the output that it gives, first of all, it will be in tune with the emotional uh, framework that I'm sharing. But as it relates, you're bringing up an excellent point. So I want to make sure to separate out the factual accuracy of the output, because for example, it might say, oh, you could just see, encourage the CEO to just use this blah, blah, blah feature. That blah, blah, blah feature doesn't exist. What the heck are you talking about? ChatGPT can do those kinds of things. Or I believe that's saying, the hey, I'm more important than your side. No, I it's, it's, saying, like, it's okay. not going to do anything like that. But it, it can reference features, products, et cetera, that just don't exist. And that's where one of the things that you can do regardless of what the topic is and regardless of the type of input, et cetera, you can always turn back to the GPT and say, can you check for the accuracy of your recommendation above? 
Oh, interesting. Yes, and it does. And there have been many times where, by the way, I, I experience this um, most frequently when I'm asking it for, I use it for brainstorming on how to create a flow. I'm thinking, I have a certain idea in my head of how to structure the flow, but I'll ask the GPT how to do that. And the, the GPT will suggest something and I'm like, that makes no sense. That's four extra steps. What the heck are you talking about? Or it'll talk about a feature in flow that just doesn't exist. And I'll go back as I get to that point. I'm like, wait, what? That, what? what? And why would you do that? And it'll correct itself. And it'll say, oh yeah, I'm mistaken. Let me redo it. Oh, interesting. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. So the prompt is, can you check the accuracy of that? Or anything like that. You can just ask it to. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you yes. so much. I'm glad you brought it up. It's a great point. Yep. Thank you. Yes. Someone else had something else you wanted to say? I'm trying to keep tabs on the chat. I see there's some stuff I'm going to get to soon. So all good. All right. Next, we've got... So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit enter over here. And let's see what we get as an output. I understand your predicament. Let me make the font a little bit bigger for you guys. Okay. I understand your predicament and it's crucial to handle the situation delicately to avoid potential issues down the road. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. If I wouldn't have given the context that it's a CEO and I'm concerned and I don't know what to do and blah, blah, blah. So it, it wouldn't, uh, it, it would just be very, maybe too straightforward, maybe a little bit too aggressive, maybe too assertive in its response. So here's a, my suggested approach. Uh, understand the CEO's needs before pushing back. So here it's giving coaching. It's not even like preparing an email or anything like that, but which we're going to get to soon. We're going to take it to the next couple of steps. Understand the CEO's needs. Before pushing back, make sure you understand the CEO wants, why the CEO wants this custom object. What specific information does he want to track about his contacts? Understanding this requirement will help you address his needs more effectively. Educate on best practices. Highlight the risks. Present alternatives. Document discussions. Seek stakeholder support. Stay professional and positive. And all of that is completely accurate, but it's not giving me anything truly actionable that I really know. Like, I totally get it. I'm like, yeah, thank you. But I still have no idea what the heck I'm really supposed to do right now. So what I'm going to do over here on the bottom is I'm going to continue the thread of conversation. This is another part for those of you who are not familiar with using ChatGPT. You have to treat it as if it's a person where you can have that back and forth conversation. This is not like you do a Google search, you get results. You do another Google search, you get no more results. No, this is more like you have a thread of conversation. You can continue the conversation. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, uh, this is great, but I need your uh, help to identify the risks associated, associated to this nonsense. Now, uh, can you help me list them out? So I'm being generic. I'm not really specifying. I'm not referencing back the conversation up above. I'm allowing the chat GPT to do it on its own. So now we can see over here. Data duplication, creating a separate custom object for the CEO's context may lead to duplication of data if the same contact already uh, is already stored in the standard objects. Yeah, maybe I wasn't even thinking of that, but oh my gosh, that's a great point. Increased complexity, introducing a new custom object adds complexity. Maintenance overhead, reporting challenges, user adoption challenges, integration complexity, scalability concerns. All of this is completely accurate. However, we all know that if I were to cut and paste this and give it to the CEO, there's no way his eyes are going to, his or her eyes will glaze over. They're not going to look at it. They can't relate to it. They're going to be like, that's too technical. I don't really understand. I need ChatGPT to help me out even further. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, awesome. I would love to share this with our CEO, but he's not very technical and won't understand the importance applications for each of these without examples. Can you rewrite it in a concise note, concise and friendly conversational way, giving examples of each risk in a relatable way, that uh, relatable way that he will understand? from the context of a CEO who expects Salesforce data to be accurate and easy to track. And now let's see what we get. And now it's writing an email. Data duplication. Imagine if we had, if we have your context stored both in the new custom object and in the standard context section of Salesforce. See, it's not even 
it, it, it's wording it in a way that he will understand the contacts section. This could lead to confusion and errors if someone updates one record but forgets to update the other. He will understand that. We want to avoid having multiple versions of the same contact floating around as it can make, as it can make it hard to know which information is correct. Increased complexity. Think of our Salesforce system as a well-organized filing cabinet. Adding a new custom object is like adding a new drawer. It might seem like a good idea at first, but it can make finding and organizing information more complicated. So you can see over here, it's already, it's synthesizing the material that we need in a way that's going to be a lot more digestible for the CEO to absorb. I'm going to pause. I'm going to, I'm about to take this to a couple of other steps to like take, bring it wing to, to the next steps of what a typical Salesforce admin would do with this information. But before I do, anyone have any questions, concerns on anything that I did so far? Yeah, David, I have a question. So I'm just wondering, still seems like a very lengthy email to send for someone who may not read it. Can we ask it to be more concise and put it into pictures or really something that stand out quickly? Can we do that? So you can. And thank you for asking that because that's precisely, not precisely, that's in the general sense, the direction that I was going to take it in. Where most of us find as an admin, we know that the person we're talking to they're not, they're still, they're not going to read it. It doesn't matter how friendly it is. It's just not going to go. It's not going to work. So one way of doing it is through images. Yes, we can do that. And by the way, if we have time, I'm happy to show you how to use AI to create image besides Dali, which you can do, how to use AI in general to create images for any purpose at all, for presentations, et cetera. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate as if I am the Salesforce admin, I am looking at this output and I'm like, CEO's eyes are going to glaze over. He's not going to read this. This an email is not a good thing. It needs to be, this needs to be a meeting. It needs to be a presentation. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say, this is great, but realizing that there's no way in the world he will have the patience to read and uh, process the info in this email. I'm going to set up a meeting with him to discuss this. Can you help me? Are you ready for this? Put together a presentation uh, slide by slide with a breakdown of what I should include on each slide and the talking points I should have on each slide. Maybe speaker notes too, and even some suggestions on what visuals or other graphics might be most appropriate for each slide. By having it as a presentation, even if we know it's going to be hard to get on the CEO's schedule, by having it as a presentation, all of a sudden now maybe they'll actually take us a little bit more seriously if they see it in the form of a PowerPoint, etc. Let's take a look at what we have over here. Uh, they gave us a whole bunch of slides. Come on. All right. Slide title, optimizing contact management in Salesforce. Subtitle, minimizing risks and maximizing efficiency. Even that, it's putting it within the framework of what a CEO cares about. It's not, let's talk about how your idea is really stupid and there's no way in hell that I'm doing it. No, it's like we want, as a CEO, you want to minimize risk and maximize efficiency, right? Visual, company logo or a relevant background image. Welcome and agenda. Let's skip that. Current contact management. Talking points, provide an overview of how contacts are currently managed in Salesforce, highlight any existing challenges or pain points, visual Salesforce screenshot, showing the contacts tab or relevant data visualization. Proposed solution, creating a custom object. Proposed sol and the so the title is creating custom objects for the CEO's contacts. Present the CEO's request to create a, a custom object. Explain the potential implications and risks. Visual icon or image representing a custom object. So create the visual that actually shows it as a custom object. Risks and challenges. So we have it on our own dedicated slide. Outline the specific risks and challenges, which, by the way, was provided up. I could all have to do is go scroll up if I really want to have all of those details baked into that slide itself. Oh, never mind. I don't have to. I didn't even realize. What it did was it broke it down. It, this is basically introducing that we're going to now talk about the risks and challenges. Challenge one is data duplication. So it has its own dedicated slide. Visual before and after comparison of contact data organization. Increased complexity. So here it even shows, look at this, risk two. Risk three, maintenance overhead. So it's doing exactly that and also giving us some suggestions on how to 
create a visual to get their attention. Any questions on what I just did? This is fantastic. I think for a presentation, if you are having a meeting with the folks, I personally don't think that he or she will take the time to read through all of this still. Is there a way to consolidate it even further? Just in in the context of sending out an email, it should be very succinct and yep. right to the point. Yep. Okay. So what we're going to do is this. Let's go. I'm going to scroll up over here. I'm going to use your follow-up question as an opportunity to not only do it, but to also show you another feature within ChatGPT. So I'm gonna go back over here earlier in the thread where we have the actual email output before I started talking about a presentation. And I'm simply going to select all of this text over here. And now what you're going to see is on the top, I have this little icon over here that shows quotation marks and it shows reply. So this is quite similar to when we are in iMessage or any other or Slack or anything else where you can quote something else that came up in the conversation earlier. So by clicking on that icon, it brought it down over here. And now it's telling the chat GPT that whatever it is that I'm about to say uh, correlates to this content specifically. So I don't have to repeat it or I don't have to reference it or anything else. So now I'm going to say, let's go back to exploring this email. Can you help me make it more concise? And let's see what we get. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. That's funny. This is the first time I've ever seen a different font in the output. I've never seen that before. Here, so it broke it down. It's a single sentence for each one now. See, so yeah, and it says, let's discuss alternative solutions. Again, a different font. Interesting. Now, by the way, if you wanted, we could do this. Can you help me create, no, create, I'm going to explain in a second why I just changed that. Create an image to accompany this email. So the reason why I said, wait, is it doing it or not? Oh, it's not doing it because I'm in 3.5. I forgot. So if I was in four, I've learned this the hard way. If I say, help me create an image, it's going to be like, oh, to create an image, all you have to do is this. Go into Canva or in PowerPoint or a stock, a, what's the word I'm looking for? Like Shutterstock, a royalty-free image tool, and just create an image that has one of these things in it. Like, no, that's not what I want. So because I'm in the free one, I can't have it create an image directly in here. If I did all of this conversation in, in ChatGPT4, I could. But alternatively, what I could do is this. I can go over here and grab all of this. And now I'm going to hit copy. And now I'm going to switch into ChatGPT4. And now I'm just going to say on the very top, create an image to accompany the email below. And now I'm just going to paste that entire even with the gobbledygook emojis, whatever is there. I'm just going to paste the whole thing. And now let's see what we got. And now it shows creating image. I have no clue what it's going to come up with. Usually it comes up with something cute. Uh, a little questionable sometimes. What the heck were you thinking? But it definitely gets their attention. Come on. You could do it. Error. Let's try again. Okay. So while it does that, first I'll pause. Anyone else have any other questions on anything that either I did or you thought I should have done. I had a quick question, David. Yes. How do we navigate the copyright issues? I know that's been one of the main things that, that we're coming up lately and that can be tricky. Elaborate a little bit. Copyright issues as it relates to? Certain images, um, depending on that it's owned by a company, another person, that, and depending on how you use it, it can be problematic legally. So I was just curious about if you want to use more images, because that's one of the things why I was considering chat GPT for, because I love the idea of using images. I just have to figure out how to navigate what's all versus why I need to pay to you. Yeah, so that's that's image, my understanding is that any image created by AI, it's public domain. Neither you own it nor anybody else. Oh, uh, cool. Which, by the way, that's precisely why I rely heavily on AI to create images for me excuse me, for a blog post and social media posts, because it's so much easier and faster for me to simply create the type of image that I want instead of looking for through libraries that like even that I pay for. But, oh, if you use this image, you have to also include an attribute that it's from blah, blah, blah. And I don't have a problem doing that. It's just I don't really want that hassle to have to remember one more thing. I would rather have the AI create a more appropriate image for me based on what I want, the look and feel of what I want, like whatever I want represented. And I don't have to say anything. It was created by, by GPT. Who cares? 
I love that thing. So the, the stuff that I've been listening to or reading about, that's more of when chat GPT pulls an image from that's already existing. So the different ball games. Yeah. So if basically you tell the GPT, create an image that looks like Mickey Mouse smoking pot and it, <laughs> does, it actually does that, there's still nothing stopping Disney from suing you for trying to make it look like it's an authentic Disney image or tarnishing the Disney name in some way. So that's a, a very different type of an issue, but it's not a copyright issue. Like Disney is suing not because they're claiming you stole their thing. They're claiming you're tarnishing their image by what you're doing, making it look like it's even if you're saying that you created it, they're going to be like, we don't care. The visual, it won't stop them from suing you. That's awesome. Now, I'm really interested in GPT-4. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. So by the way, I would not sign up for GPT-4 just for the images. GPT-4 is far more powerful for so many other things, but I would not necessarily do it just for the images. If we have time, I'll go into images in a little bit. I don't think we'll have time because just looking at where we are right now. But with that being said, anyone else have any other questions on anything that I showed you so far? David, there's a question in the chat. Hang on, there's actually a lot of stuff in the to GPT for the create PowerPoints. That is a great question. Actually, in the plugins, there's a lot of different ways that you can handle PowerPoints. In the plugins, you can basically find a plugin that, or let's do a presentation or PPT here, like Slide Maker. So there are different plugins that will claim to do it, but I'll tell you right now. None of them. It'll take certain words and pop it onto an appropriate slide. It's not going to look professional by any means. Instead, what I would recommend that you do is either use the plugin for Canva. Well, where am I over here? For those of you who are familiar with Canva, either use the plugin for Canva or alternatively, you don't even need to do that. I would strongly recommend that you use Canva, a paid version of Canva. And you're going to see why. All I have to do is here. I could even just go over here and say, where am I here? Let's go back to my prior thread in the conversation. And let's do this. And let's find a title over here. Or you know what? I'll just do it on the fly. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, why we issues with creating a duplicate custom object in Salesforce. So I'm just putting a whole bunch of words in here and I'm just hitting enter. And basically what Canva is doing is, oh, I should have said presentation. Sorry. Let's do this. Do it one more time. Presentation regarding. Okay. So what it's doing is it's automatically showing me. So this existed before AI was around, just showing me all of their presentation templates where I could choose the look and feel of whatever I want. And I can just jump into that. Okay, big whoop, duplicate standards. What it did up here, what Canva calls magic design, is it created for me seven different templates of presentations specific to the topic of based on whatever inputs I gave over here on the top. It's going to give me templates where let's click on any random one of these. This is slide one. Duplicate customization, presentation on issues faced while creating duplicate custom objects in Salesforce. Slide two. Slide three, slide four, slide five. So basically it's trying to figure out based on the input that I gave the framework for what it should look like. And it gave a look and feel, which in Canva, you click one button and you change the colors and fonts to be your corporate colors and fonts. You throw in your own logo, not a big deal. But you, once you have this, you can simply copy and paste each of the items that Canva gave for each slide onto each slide in Canva. So that's how... I would prefer to do it, but that's me. Any questions on that? No, but that's how I did it too. I'm going to give you another use case. Someone asked me to put something anonymously, which I think is very entertaining and appropriate, but there's so many other more, I think more important things that I should be showing you now. So I apologize. I'm not going to call out that person because they asked me to do it anonymously. So what I'm going to say is this. Now let's jump into a scenario where we go back into just chat GPT. Yeah, I'm going to show you chat with chat GPT 4. And let's make believe we need to create, we just had a meeting with someone about a particular business process that they have 
as a business and they want to be able to manage it better in Salesforce. And what we need to do as the Salesforce admin, they're not necessarily asking us for it, but what we need to do is we need to essentially put together a document that pretty much summarizes and explains um, what that process is or what enhancements it is that they are actually looking for. And before we roll up our sleeves to do anything in Salesforce, we need to get confirmation with that person that what we're about to do matches what their expectations are. Anyone have any questions on that use case and what we're about to do? Good so far? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, let's make believe this is a use case for a, a I'm trying to think of an industry, let's say a, a company that does business to business equipment finance. And they need to, they want to manage their prospecting process within Salesforce. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say act as the COO, whoops, COO of a B2B equipment finance company. Actually, I'm going to show you a different use case, make it way easier. Equipment finance. I'm going to look for any company. Let's make believe that. Let's make believe this is the company that we're talking about. This is the company that you're working for. Or if you're a Salesforce consultant, this is your client. All I have to do is copy this URL. And then over here, just to make sure it can access it, I might go to the plugins and choose the appropriate plugin for the web. But ChatGPT4 should be able to do it. I'm going to say, can you access this URL? Sometimes it says no for reasons that don't really make sense to me. But it looks like it's able to. Let's see. Beautiful. So I don't care whatever it's about to output. I don't even care. Let's assume it's like a mini Wikipedia version about whatever it found on the website. So now that it understands the company and what the company does, and it's able to see the website, all I have to do now is say, act as the COO of this company. I need your help to identify the appropriate processes necessary to manage, track, or just say manage and track the qualification of new prospects for the organization. Can you help me create a list of the various processes that might be involved with this? So I'm being super generic, like I'm not even really specifically saying what it is that I'm looking for other than help me identify if there are multiple processes. And okay, now it's giving me a whole bunch of processes. It looks like it's probably just going to be five because it already says evaluation and feedback loop. It's probably the last one. Yep. Okay. So now I'm going to say, can you help me create a document of the step by step instructions for the process? Now I'm going to speak in the singular. We're up above. It's giving me multiple processes, but let's see what happens now when I speak in the singular process that this company should use for taking in qualifying and qualifying and qualifying prospects. And now it's going to ensure compliance with policies. I can't create a document directly here, but I can outline the steps for a process. Okay, great. So now let's make believe for a minute that I just finished a meeting with someone at this company and I have a document that outlines some, whatever my notes are from that meeting. What I would do now is I would attach that document and then I would say, can you update the things you have over here in order to incorporate the things that I have in my notes from that particular meeting? But without having that, what I'm going to say is this, uh, that this um, act as an experienced Salesforce. Admin, I'm working with a, uh, I'm working with this company and they want to start tracking their prospects in Salesforce and automatically assigning prospects based on the uh, graphic to specific team members. Can you help me? figure out which fields we need to have in Salesforce on the contact and account, maybe opportunity too, and you can see I'm purposely abbreviating opportunity in order to best track this. And let's see what we get. 
Okay, so now it's just giving me an indentation form, what it should have. And great. So now I'm going to say, this is cool, but can you provide me this output as a table with columns for the object, field, name, field, type, and any other notes for each specific field. I don't even know what it's analyzing. I'm surprised that it even says that because I'm not sure what that re really even means here because I didn't attach anything. But it should now give me basically a spreadsheet that all I have to do is copy and paste it into Excel or Google Sheets. And, and you'll see. I don't know why it's taking so long. But the next thing that I can do is turn to it and say, give me a, turn it into a business requirements document. Okay. I'm just going to stop this and I'm going to go back in here and I'm just going to regenerate from here. Let's see what happens. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is this. I want to show you, before we run out of time, I want to show you another very cool best practice that I am completely in love with. The paperclip option over here. All you have to do is watch this. File type, file type, PDF, business requirements gathering template. And... Let's see, some kind of free template that we can get from online. A PDF, that might be a PDF. Okay, let's take this. Why not? I'm not even going to bother looking at the whole thing. Just hit save. Okay, so now let's go back to ChatGPT. And you can see over here, it gave us a format of what we should include. Now, if I'm looking back in my notes, and we talked about that they want to track the favorite flavor of ice cream, the industry, the number of employees, or anything else that's not represented in the spreadsheet, I could basically go back into the spreadsheet and say, can you update the table above in order to include X, Y, and Z, or in order to include the things that are listed in my attached Microsoft Word document, which are my notes from the meeting. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to say attached. You will find a PDF showing best practices for creating a business requirements document. Can you help? Can you write one for me? Can you write one for me based on the requirements above? And I'm just going to attach that document and then I'm going to hit enter. So now it's going to read that PDF that I just downloaded. Now keep in mind, if you have your own internal business process, your own internal rules, your own template that you've created, you can use your own template where it's basically filling it all in for you. Any questions on any of that? So here you can see, even though I gave it bare bones information about the business process, I had to create its own business process. I, I didn't even specify the company's business process, but I could have without putting in confidential, sensitive, private information. And then I can allow the chat GPT to, and it's not going to be hundred percent right whatsoever, but even if it's 50%, even if it helps me accelerate the process, reduce the brain cell capacity so I can get further in what I need. I might look over here and like, I don't need some of these sections. Like I get it while well, it's there. Maybe it was even in the template, but for this use case, I don't need it. I can copy and paste all of this into a Google doc and then just delete whatever it is that I don't need. And then let's say I want to, from here, taking it further like I did earlier, can you help me write a friendly cover letter of an email to my contact at the company sharing the business requirements document? And now it's going to help me. And again, the tone might be a little bit off. The wording might be a little bit off. But at the very least, it's going to help accelerate the process of getting that business requirements document out and speaking in a professional way uh, in the way that I want to accomplish what I need. I'm treating ChatGPT as my assistant. Now also here, by the way, this is way too many words. I, like I would trim it down. I would make it more friendly, et cetera. I could do that either with the ChatGPT or I can just do it directly in Gmail before say, hitting send. Any questions on anything that I showed you? Okay. We are, we need to wrap it up in terms of timing. I just want to encourage you for those who haven't already gone to my website, to Brain Eat Academy, I encourage all of you. I've got a bunch of free resources here that you can check out to learn more about how to use ChatGPT, also how to get some best, learn some best practices for being more proficient as a Salesforce admin and project manager. I encourage you to check it all out. 
If you need any other help from me, you can feel free to reach out to me through LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever you like. But that's it for me. Any questions? Thoughts? Thank you so much. This was so helpful. Thank you. Awesome. I really yeah, appreciate great it. Stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you, David. Bye-bye.